Welcome back everyone. Today we're at the uh, Nabut Cemetery in Shipley and Andrew, who's standing beside me, is going to show a, a grave of an unsung hero. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of these stories that uh, amazes you that nobody's ever really covered it before. I mean, we've got a chap buried here that uh, has done so many amazing things for Bradford, yet uh, it's kind of recorded only one major thing but looking into the history yeah. we found quite a lot about him right so uh, i thought we'd have a quick wander just up here and we'll show you that, who that it action. is and where he's buried so today uh, as you can see we're in the nabwood cemetery it's a, it's a fantastic place and we've come to find uh, walter williamson now that name probably means absolutely nothing to most people and that's where the problem lies because walter He's quite a chap, and we're going to take you on a little bit of a journey. But here we have the grave of Walter, Walter Williamson. Now, Walter is quite a, a special uh, chap. I don't know if you can see there on the headstone, but we have City Architect Bradford. 1910 to 1931 which means he was in charge of designing uh, most if not all of the municipally owned buildings of the corporation between them dates so it's, what we're going to do is throughout this film is take you to some of the places that he actually designed and I think you might be quite surprised but you must watch to the end because the biggest surprise is at the end We've just left Walter, uh, where he's buried, and now we're just going to show you one of his uh, major achievements in the city. You might recognise the Alhambra behind us, and as I walk along, you can see the side of us here is the Bradford War Memorial, or Cenotaph, designed by Walter Williamson. So the man you've just seen in the graveyard, this is one of his uh, major projects. So that's the original design drawing that was issued in the newspaper in 1921, showing the uh, design that uh, Walter had come up with for this area. And um, it was approved, finally approved, it says in the, in the notes, but um, it says here that the figures either side of the central mass are those of a soldier and a sailor. They are armed with bayonets fixed and are shown at the withdraw. The one from the high and the other from the low point, the uh, attitude has been chosen as symbolising the cessation of desperate effort. So there was a meaning behind it. Um, but it actually caused a little bit of upset and in the newspapers uh, I was finding <laughs> you can't believe this when you read it but uh, it was actually down as the country's worst war memorial now they actually felt that um, the way that the figures were standing were actually more about um, the forward push so it was actually more aggression than actual peace. Whereas you've got war memorials all around the country that have like Archangel on the top. Um, it demonstrates peace. Whereas because these are weaponized, people were um, saying that no, it's giving the wrong message. Just out of interest, out of the official uh, unveiling booklet, uh, just to prove what we've found out so far, you can see that uh, the memorial, which takes the form of a cenotaph was designed by the city architect, Mr. Walter Williamson. And, uh, like we discussed earlier, it was classed as England's worst. Okay. Its popularity was obvious in the coming years. So you see how many thousands of people would turn up to the cenotaph on Remembrance Sunday. So it was it was to pay homage to uh, fallen troops, of which, at sort of in the before the Second World War, 
I mean, you've got thousands and thousands of families that lost people, and um, this was a place to congregate, and it still is today. So now we move on to the next project uh, that Walter was involved with, and uh, you might see we've come up from the cenotaph. We're now Queen Victoria at the side of us here. If we wander just up here, there's uh, something a little bit sort of unusual, and some people in Bradford know about it, but uh, it seems to uh, sort of be in the background a little bit. Now, what we have here, you can see something set out, and you can see some of the features of this. See what it says, 90 links, 60 feet. So it's a, it's basically a giant ruler if you like. It's a measuring device. Now, if we work, because we're down here, don't know if you can see that clearly, but uh, so it's standards of length at 62 degrees Fahrenheit, placed on this site by the Bradford Corporation of the City of Bradford, and it was about I think 1913. So the Board of Trade have this. It's a device for measuring um, the product that was uh, produced in Bradford. Okay. Now, Walter was given this as one of his tasks as architect because it originally wasn't here. This was originally at the back of Bradford City Hall. So, if you pardon the pun, this is the full scale of it. Terrible, I know, it's a dad joke, isn't it? But you can see the distance. Standard measure of 100 feet and standard chain of 66 feet. That's what's on the placard down here. Now, this is another one of his projects. Will, uh, Walter Williamson designed this building behind me and it was in 1918. It was the Morley Street Welfare and Milk Depot. So it had a purpose, it was another municipal building for the Bradford Corporation. And as you can see, it's quite a substantial size building, quite ornate. And uh, if we have a little bit of a wander along, see some of the some of the features. You've got cherubs and stuff above the door, and um, as it was a depot for, um, it's like delivering milk to schools. So I guess it was the first sort of um, public. Um, Get introducing milk into schools, you know, part of the health, health and well, well-being of children. So you can see here, this would have been the courtyard for the horse and carts, or even motor vehicles. Eventually, would come through here. It's designed with these buffers on. So a cart, if it went through, knocking on the wheels, doesn't damage the stonework. So you can see it's had quite a heavy duty usage and I do actually have a plan of what was inside so we're actually stood here which is the entrance way into the loading platform you can see there loading platforms and you've got um, milk would have been um, processed here into bottles and put into the horse and cart or the motor vehicle and taken out and then distributed to all the local council schools or corporation schools as it was then. But you can see that it was uh, more than one floor and you also had um, children's welfare. So you've got like uh, weighing rooms for babies. It, it was an early, like an NHS type building run by the uh, corporation and the outside of the building look like that. So I'm guessing is that, is that where you were standing earlier? So on? that's the entrance to the building on the corner that's the one with the the cherubs above the door and we're stood just here now and you can see there the old milk cart with churns on
So Walter was also involved in a, well, a, quite a major refurb inside uh, City Hall. Uh, when the extension was added in 1909, they also decided to remodel the inner staircase, which is at the top of the stairs here and through the double doors. What you can see here is what it looks like up there, but we'll try and uh, get some more pictures to show you. Now, it was supervised by the same architect that actually did the work on the extension, but uh, Walter took over uh, supervision as well. So he was actually quite a major part of this. And we have absolutely struggled to find an actual photograph of Walter. He is the most uh, unphotographed man in the, the whole of Bradford. But just by chance, I found this photograph. And it says the new main staircase for Bradford Town Hall. So that put pinpoints him uh, with this particular project. And there he is, yeah. That's the only photograph we've managed to find of him. After all these different projects and all the, uh, the good that he's done, that's all we've found. So the photograph actually shows one of the steps for the town hall being produced. This is uh, one of the more unusual things about uh, Walter that we've found out. And you'll all recognise this building. Uh, this is uh, Bolling Hall and um, you might ask well why have we come here because this is centuries old and of course um, Walter, Walter's not as old as when this was built. Well th the thing is Walter was actually asked to uh, be the architect to restore this building. So to be honest with you when you look this might not have actually survived if it hadn't have been for Walter's actual work on it. So in uh, just before 1915, the land in this area was being looked at to be purchased by the Bradford Corporation. And one of the things, there was a deal struck that if they bought a certain amount of land, that Bolling Hall would be thrown in as part of the deal. So they managed to... Uh, obtained the building but it was in quite a, a ruined state so Walter was then put on as chief architect of Bradford Corporation to make sure that this survived so it's actually quite an important part of his story. So we now come to uh, Great Horton Library or the former Great Horton Library and again it's another one that uh, Walter Williamson uh, was architect of doing all these municipal buildings for the corporation. They're scattered all over the place. But this is uh, sort of one of the, the most commendable ones that we've come across. And uh, I have one of his drawings here. So you can see it's quite a majestic building. Fortunately, it's on a busy junction now, but uh, back then it was uh, horse carts and trams. But uh, yeah, you can see over the door the fantastic crest that's carved out of stone. But uh, the whole design, it's just a really, really pleasant looking building and uh, a credit to him. Oh, we've come to the end of our journey with Walter Williamson. Um, said we'd leave the, uh, the very best till last. Uh, so what we're going to do is, it's the big reveal. Right, you just turn around. Britannia House. People know it, see it every day, people work in it. But um, now we've connected everything together to just show the amazing career of uh, Walter and all these achievements over the years. The uh, building behind us, plans were submitted in about 1927, but work started 1930, and then by 1933, it was open to uh, use and is home now of uh, uh, sort of the council's uh, different departments and has been for many years. It might be quite poignant to stand in uh, the Remembrance Garden around behind City Hall. Um, you can see Britannia House is uh, crowning glory in the background there. And um, he actually resigned in 1931 due to ill health. So officially left 
the uh, corporation as an architect. And uh, just going through the records, I managed to find that uh, he actually died in 1944 and he actually died in uh, Lytham in, uh, over in Lancashire, which is the seaside town just below Blackpool. Um, for whatever reason, he was buried in Nabwood uh, after his death and uh, obviously came back to possibly the city that he really loved. Um, he obviously, well, he obviously had no family in Manchester anymore because I would have thought he might have gone to a cemetery there, but uh, no, he came back to uh, where he'd done all his work.